Cactus Range, a modest mountain range rising over a dynamic landscape in central Nevada, is where one important chapter in American history was closed. 190 miles north of Las Vegas, Cactus is part of the Nevada Test and Training Range managed by Nellis Air Force Base. This three million acre land block is the premier military fighter and bombing pilot training range in the nation. But during the early 1900s, hard rock miners searched this land for gold and silver. What was life like in the southern Great Basin deserts? Native Americans understood how to obtain scarce water and food, but the miners were from a different culture with contrasting skills. Who were these people? What type of hardships did they endure? And is there gold and silver just waiting to be discovered? Many of them thought maybe uh, tomorrow we'll hit the big one, we'll hit that vein and be on Easy Street. There's really not much difference than feeling that you're going to make it on the slot machines <laughs> than when you're going to find it out in the, in the desert. It's strange because a lot of other camps, the people that own the property will bring a company in, they'll trade the mine off, they'll go somewhere else, and the company will work. Here it was a family thing, and the family stayed here for 30 years or more. He really felt very definitely that he had a good ore and he would have a bonanza there. Miners who ventured out to the Cactus Range would have to rely on resources from the neighboring boom towns of Tonopah or Goldfield. In the early 20th century, these towns experienced rapid growth by mining huge amounts of gold and silver. By 1907, Goldfield had a population of more than 30,000 people, and in its lifetime, the town generated nearly $84 million in revenue. Inspired by the wealth and promise of these towns, Cactus Range prospectors were convinced another bonanza was nearby. I think people initially went out to the Cactus Range just because of the uh, gold fever everyone had, and uh, it was another likely spot for a discovery, and it was being advertised by promotion firms as the next new mining camp in central Nevada. They were looking for burned red outcrops, siliceous outcrops, similar to what they found in Goldfield, because that was their model. And then their other model, they were looking for quartz. Quartz was, you know, from the Virginia City days, quartz was the thing that the prospectors looked for. It had been a pretty active area, but it just shows you if, if people have gold fever and you do see a little bit of mineralization, the rush is on, not so much the boom, but the rush will be on, and cactus area was a good example of that. The United States Air Force is committed to scientific research and protection of its resources. In 2004, an archaeologist for Nellis Air Force Base located two women whose fathers conducted mining in Cactus Range. Their stories reveal their father's determination to follow their dream of mining riches, treks that took them through Goldfield to the Cactus Range. We came first to Gold Point, and then we came into Goldfield, and then that's when my dad got interested in doing some mining. James Curtis Thompson moved his family from Los Angeles to Goldfield in 1924. The reason they moved to Goldfield was because of uh, work. My father was a telegrapher in the Navy during World War I, and uh, he got a job as station agent in Goldfield with the Tonopah Tidewater Railroad. And so the main reason was a job. Thompson began prospecting 28 miles east of Goldfield and located claims in a mountain area known as Cactus Range. He believed the rock had great potential for gold, but his determination to mine valuable ore and provide a better life for his family proved to be physically difficult. I would describe the, the life of a miner out at Cactus and along with a lot of these other outlaying camps uh, as very, very harsh. 
and it took a certain breed of people to to withstand that. But the the gold fever was there, and many of them thought maybe uh, tomorrow we'll hit the big one, we'll hit that vein, and be on Easy Street. But uh, that uh, that unfortunately uh, never happened for the majority of them. But James Thompson had faith in his claim. And in 1935, he decided to live on the Cactus Range and become a full-time miner. This is the Thompson mine. The adit goes in, back into the hillside, to cut under the iron stain ledge that you see up on the hill above us. That probably attracted the attention of the locator because of that iron stain nature. It looks very similar to the Goldfield ledges. In order to extract the ore, Thompson would have to engage in the arduous and expensive practice of hard rock mining. Placer mining, used in the streams of the California Gold Rush, required only two things, a washing device to separate gold from gravel and water to accomplish the washing. Hard rock mining required breaking rock to extract ore. The ore then had to be crushed and ground, then treated in a mill to separate the valued mineral. As the working moved further underground, more equipment was required steel rails, ore cars, hoisting machinery, pumps, air-driven drills, compressors, and timber. By the time Thompson settled into the cactus area, the tools and machinery were readily available, but at a cost he could not afford. So he had to mine the old-fashioned way. Their mining methods were, were hand methods. They weren't a lot more advanced than, the, you know, 100 years before that. They used hand steel. Uh, actually, the drilling was by hand. They'd have a set of, of steels of various lengths, and the miner would sit there and hammer that with his hands. He had no uh, mechanized equipment. He used the good old drill and hammer. He had drills of different sizes. Uh, they were great big, long iron drills, and he had sledgehammers, and he would put the drill up against the rock wall and just hammer away and then keep turning. And then he would put water, uh, put a little water in the hole as it got going, keep turning it and hitting it. It was very hard work. I don't know how he did it all day long. Many of the uh, shafts at these outlaying camps uh, just hand dug holes in an old hand operated windlass to lower the bucket up and down to get the waste and uh, possibly ore out if they found any. Compared here to Goldfield, you had the convenience of the high tension power lines coming in, which thus electric hoists uh, the, the top notch latest equipment. And the companies, the big companies here in Goldfield could afford that. The conditions out here were very grim. That's why this area had not been developed. There's no reason to come out here. Once they got out here, they found that they were very isolated. The isolation of Cactus Range made it difficult to raise children. Therefore, Jackie's mother kept a home in Goldfield so she and her sister Joy could attend school. On vacations, they would venture out to Cactus to spend time with their father. I liked going out there because it was different and to see my father because he was so engrossed in the mine and there so much, we didn't see very much of him. But what would happen if disaster were to strike? 